Ben Brown, Scott Thompson this week, Brad, expecting them to return? Uh, it'll depend on how they train. Um, yeah, we're really hope, hopeful they'll be available, but, um, but training will probably um, have the biggest say on that. So uh, the answer is we're hopeful, but not certain. Then Jacobs and Wright, are they in a similar position? Yeah, they both got through their, uh, their VFL stint, so uh, we'll just have to make a decision on how ready they are to play. They're both um, medically um, past fit to play, so now it becomes a match committee decision, and, and we'll base that decision largely on uh, the amount of work they've done and how they look at training. I heard Sam Gibson dropped a weight on his head. Is he OK? Uh, he's not OK, no. He's, um, he's pretty sore at the moment. It, it wasn't a weight. Um, he um, had an unfortunate gym accident where a... Um, a barbell, uh, he slipped and, and it did fall and, and hit him in the head and uh, he's got a broken nose and um, a pretty nasty gash um, on his face as well. So, um, But the fortunate thing was it happened here, it happened with our club doctor here, um, but he was sent to hospital just to rule out any other facial fractures, which he's clear of. Um, you know, it's, he's a bit uncomfortable, but we're still really optimistic he'll be available to play this week. Um, probably the most disappointing thing for Sam is that he's got a supermodel girlfriend or wife and um, he had aspirations to take on a modelling career himself and um, he's got no hope now by the way he looks. Did that happen this morning? Was that this morning? Uh, yesterday. Yep. Uh, probably, it's really hard to say. I mean he's moving really well. He's ahead of where we thought he'd be at, um, at this point. Um, he'll do a little bit today. He won't be available this week, um, you know, but we'd be hopeful for next week. Um, but, um, yeah, the way he's moving, uh, we're pretty optimistic about next week, actually. And Luke McDonald, a chance to return, I imagine, in the VFL this weekend? Yeah, Luke, Luke should be right to play uh, this week. We held him off um, from playing last week. Um, but, you know, he's, he's ticked all the boxes. So, um, yeah, we're pretty keen to get him back out and play. But, you know, all these guys, we've got to stagger them back in and, and we've got some big decisions to make as to who we bring back in and when we bring them back in. Where is uh, Sean Higgins at? Where's he at in terms of playing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he's um, he's a chance to play uh, this week. Uh, we haven't ruled out that possibility, but we'll probably err on the conservative side with him. Um, you know, he, he is, I have said before, that he's a player that we think could potentially come straight back into the senior side because he's done a fair bit of work and uh, he looks really good with his ball handling and kicking and skill work. Um, but might be this week, but we're probably looking more to next week. Brad, how do you sum up your, your form at the moment? Come, haven't been getting wins on the board, but playing yeah. some pa good, good footy in patches. Yeah, I mean, the start on the weekend was bitterly disappointing. I mean, Hawthorne um, really exerted themselves on the contest and demonstrated their class um, and their superiority in, in um, that part of the game. Um, but I thought we responded really well, kept them, kept them to basically six goals and three of them came pretty late after that. So, um, and we were able to score reasonably well ourselves. But no, we're not, we're not, um, you know, we're not certainly playing our very best footy, but um, you know, we get some players back and the players who are out there we think can perform a lot better. So there's still a lot of water to pass under the bridge before the season's out. Todd Goldstein said he's not, they're not looking over their shoulder, looking at Melbourne guys pushing up potentially into the eight, but is it becoming a concern? No, well, it's not, not. I'm glad Goldie said that because it's certainly not um, the, the club's view. I mean, our view is that, um, you know, we're, we're looking to play our best footy to make an impact in September. And if, um, if it's not about just getting there, I mean, that would insinuate that we were happy to finish eighth. Um, we're, we're not happy to finish eighth. And, you know, once um, round 23 is done, there's a week off before eight clubs get to launch an assault on the finals. And that's what we're looking at. Um, but we're going to have to play some pretty good footy in the next two weeks to get that opportunity. How do you get them up for a mini final series, a pre-finals final series? How do you get the morale up and, and get them going? I don't think you have to. I mean, our guys are really, um, uh, you know, it's, I always look at amateur coaches and junior coaches and think, gee, it must be hard to motivate your players because that's a big part of coaching at that level. At AFL level, I mean, you know, especially when the sun comes out late August, early September, you know, you, you've, you've got to actually try and keep your players calm and composed. Um, Motivation is certainly not a problem for us. Are you confident, Brad, that you can sort of hit your best form by the time the finals roll around? Yeah, given given um, the, the, the best form of the players we've got available, and that's really, you know, all we can focus on. Um, but, I mean, we're just going to keep working on it and, um, 
you know, I think that every session we do, you know, we, we make improvements. Uh, the disappointing thing about our footy this year is that we've improved some areas and then regressed in others. You know, we've really got to look to put it all together at once. Um, you know, and I, I, I think we're certainly capable of doing that, but that's our challenge. Where have you regressed most when you, when you talk about that? It's not one area or another, and unfortunately it sort of fluctuates from, from week to week. Other, some weeks we you know, defend really well and really strongly the way we want to defend, and other weeks you know, we, we have little lapses in that area. So you know, we, we're continuing uh, to coach as strongly. The players are all um, abundantly clear of how we want to play. It's just the execution hasn't been there, and so we'll keep working on that. Why Kerry and Wayne Squash said that it's time for Boom to hang up the boots? Is that a bit unfair? I oh, know. I think everyone's entitled to their opinion, and um, you know, the, a player of his stature and you know the record games holder, everyone's going to have a view. But um, you know, we'll continue to, to, or I'll continue to talk with Boomer about that. And you know, there's, there's, you know, someone told me, a media manager told me that apparently there's a board meeting to decide his future tonight. I can tell you that that's absolutely not true. We do have a board meeting, but um, senior players' futures aren't on the agenda. Um, so you know, we've got a a focus on the next two games of the home and away season and hopefully a final series. Um, we'll address all those issues when we need to, but it's not right now. But if he is adamant that he wants to play on, is he given that choice? Oh, I don't think anyone's given that choice. I mean, you look at players at any club over a period of time, but you know, the, the, I understand the, the questions that are going to come about Boomer and our senior players, but you know, other than today, I'm not going to talk about it from here on in. I'll, I'll talk about it when we've got something to tell you. The incident with Sam Mitchell, was he fortunate that it was just a fine? Uh, with Boomer? Yeah. Uh, it's up to the match review panel. I mean, I, um, they made their decision and we certainly accepted. The Swans this weekend, Brad, a, a great challenge. How, how do you rate them at the moment? Yeah, I, th I think they're, um, they're, they're proving their, their class. Again, they're a really dominant team in the contest. Um, they defend really strongly. Um, you know, I think that... Probably at the end of last year because they had a lot of injuries and they went out of the finals in straight sets. A lot of people prematurely wrote them off and they've responded in, in terrific fashion the way all great clubs do. And, and that's, Sydney certainly are a great club. So they're a great challenge for us, but we're really looking forward to it. And do you think a good record at Blundstone Arena gives you a bit of an advantage over the Swans and an opportunity to get back on the losers? Yeah, I, I think it, we, we like playing there, that's for sure. We know the ground really well. The conditions can be variable down there. Um, we've, we've played in all sorts of, uh, of conditions down at Blundstone. Um, so, yeah, I think it, it, it certainly gives us an advantage given the Swans have only, only ever played there once and we played there a fair bit. Um, but again, when Sydney um, tend to play pretty well everywhere. How do you remedy the slow starts from the second half of the year? Bar that Collingwood game, um, it's been a bit slow at the start. Are you worried that some of the like Sydney GWS will try and, and make the most of that first quarter and put the game bet? Yeah, I think they'd, they'd be looking to start well. We're, I mean, I, I don't think our starts have been a problem. We had poor start against Port Adelaide and, and Hawthorne, but other than that, um, that it really hasn't happened this year. Um, so I don't think it's a, it's a common theme. But... Every team looks to start well. We look to start well, and Sydney will certainly come out and try and attack us, and we'll be trying to do the same to them. But yeah, I don't, I don't uh, buy into the fact that it's a common theme.